Ah, good morning, everybody. Today I want to start uh, the new series of talks on uh, uh, meditation. I hope you can hear me. Yes, can you? Can hear. We can hear you. I don't hear you. Oh, how can I? <laughs> because I have not been using the my headphone. Okay, you all can hear me right now? Yes, Bhante. Okay. This time I want to start uh, uh, mindfulness of breathing uh, meditation a series, a series of talks. Uh, Although people have been using the breath as an object of meditation for a long time, uh, it is better for all of them to understand the, the teachings of the Buddha directly. Uh, they may hear people giving instructions on focusing mind on the breath, and then uh, sometimes people have uh, various type of uh, different ideas. Most of them are not correct, but uh, they are very honest, uh, and they keep trying to practice, and sometimes they get uh, totally confused. Uh, I have heard all kind of stories uh, from people uh, who, who say as soon as they start to meditate, they attain uh, jhanas and then lose everything and so forth. Uh, this, this mindfulness of breathing meditation is a very profound, deep, complicated subject. All the Buddhas practice mindfulness of breathing to attain full enlightenment. Therefore, if somebody sees, says that as soon as he or she sat down to meditate, the person uh, uh, gets into jhanas and attain liberation and so forth, so they make it uh, oversimplified. Uh, on the other hand, and some people find it extremely difficult because uh, they don't know how to use it. Uh, Buddha said, one uh, whose mindfulness of breathing in and out is perfect, well developed, gradually brought to growth according as the Buddha taught he illuminates the world like the full moon freed from clouds. This world that person illuminates is not the outside world. They all of a sudden don't become sun or moon but their own life uh, begin to shine like the moon freed from clouds. And it also is said, one whose mindfulness of breathing is both developed and perfected. Developed and perfected. Remains quite settled in his body quite settled in his mind. Both bo body and mind are quite settled. Remains quite steady in his body and remains quite steady in his mind. And therefore, this is very important uh, subject that we have to uh, 
learn very carefully and mindfully. And Buddha himself is called this is not easy. And mindfulness of breathing is good for both tranquility meditation as well as vipassana meditation. These are the two aspects of Buddhist meditation. One must not think that Buddha taught uh, either only mindfulness of breathing or tranquility meditation or insight meditation. He did not teach this as two separate subjects. Buddha taught both as a, uh, uh, Buddhist meditation and uh, like two sides of the same coin. These two always go together. And therefore, the mindfulness of breathing has to be very carefully uh, practiced, very uh, with understanding. So, in order to make the practice uh, more effective, one has to avoid uh, certain uh, uh, certain things that are uh, disturbing the practice. And of course, uh, in the discourse itself, Buddha mentioned one who goes to forest, lonely place, secluded place, that's called physical seclusion, mental seclusion, go to a uh, the sometimes uh, empty house, channel ground, forest, uh, under the root of a tree, at the root of the tree, uh, something like the uh, place like that. So that uh, there is no much sound, uh, no lot of noises, uh, no human movements, uh, no vehicle sounds, uh, not near a well where people come and, uh, you know, gossip or chit chat, uh, not close to a marketplace and so forth. One has to select a place, very quiet place. Of course, these days it is rather difficult to find uh, such a uh, noiseless place, but at least we can find a, a place with less noise. Even one's own room, if, he, if, the, if the person is alone, one's own room is good enough. So the number one is the, the, the place. Uh, number two is the uh, resort. And then one has to avoid speech, keep talking always, and avoid people who are not practicing meditation. And one has to eat moderately. And one has to stay in a suitable place with suitable climate. And the posture, a steady posture, posture that what does not uh, make too uncomfortable or too lazy and these are the things that one has to keep in mind. And then at the same time one must have certain skills to make it uh, uh, very uh, practical. These are the skills that traditionally I mentioned that one should possess. That is making the base clean. That means in my immediate environment of meditation should be clean. That is uh, the seat, the floor, uh, cushions, where there are no dust, no you know insects, creeping creatures. Uh, and uh, rough uh, uh, 
like thorns, rocks and so forth, uh, avoid all these things. And that is, and also physically, one must have a clean body. Because if the body is not clean, one experience each here and there, and uh, that also disturbs the practice. So, immediate environment is the body, then the clothes, uh, neat clothes. Uh, if the clothes is not clean, uh, can uh, make uh, uncomfortable. Then maintain the balance of faculties. Faculties such as uh, faith, energy, uh, mindfulness, concentration, wisdom. These are the faculties. That means when one faculty is stronger than the other, we must learn to balance it. We will discuss this uh, in detail later on when we uh, talk about uh, the development of mindfulness of breathing. And Buddha said mindfulness of breathing, when developed, cultivated, we uh, practice all the four foundations of mindfulness. We practice only mindfulness of breathing. When we practice mindfulness of breathing, the discourse itself has mentioned that uh, uh, all the four foundations of mindfulness will be practiced, completed, such as mindfulness of the body, mindfulness of feelings, mindfulness of the mind, and mindfulness of mental object, Dhamma. All these four foundations of mindfulness are compressed in mindfulness of breathing. So we have to decompress this and we have to we have to understand the mindfulness of breathing, how it develops or uh, includes all the other four foundations. And not only that, when we develop four foundations, mindfulness of breathing, we develop four foundations of mindfulness and also develop seven factors of enlightenment and the Noble Eightfold Path. That means, that is why I said all the Buddhas, all enlightened persons, Pachyaka Buddhas, Silent Buddhas, Arahants, all attain this highest state of attainment by practicing mindfulness of breathing. Therefore, it is very profound subject. And then, when I mention balancing faculties, I mention it when I, we come to, in this uh, series of talks on mindfulness of breathing, we will come to a stage where we discuss seven factors of enlightenment, where I mention how to balance the faculties. Then, also one, should be skilled in science. With regard to science, there are all kind of confused uh, beliefs. Uh, science means, friends, when you are focusing mind on the breath, uh, that also I discuss in detail, there will arise a time or moment where at the tip of your nostrils or rims of your nostrils uh, you feel very, very soft, gentle uh, feeling like uh, uh, soft, uh, soft as feather of a bird is rubbing or flower, petal of flower rubbing. Uh, or piece of cotton is rubbing. Like that feeling you experience and one must not be confused with that uh, and the person must be very clear and skillful in noticing 
that sign. Then, uh, when mind is needed to be exerted, that means when the person is lazy, one should arouse energy to exert effort to continue the practice. This is a very common thing. People immediately become slouched, lazy, lethargic, and sleepy. And then they go to sleep. Very easy to, easy uh, for one to go to sleep. Very easy. So we must learn to exert energy to, uh, to overcome uh, sleepiness among hindrances. We will discuss the, all this later. And he also restrained the mind on occasion when it should be restrained. When the mind is uh, wandering, that's just the opposite of sleepiness. Uh, mind begin to, when we overcome sleepiness, it uh, goes to the other spectrum, from one extreme to the other. And then one has to overcome that. And then one looks on um, at the mind with equanimity when it should be lo loosed on it on act, uh, with equanimity. That means uh, when the mind goes to one side or another side, becomes biased. Uh, due to various emotions, uh, greed, uh, anger, uh, jealousy, fear, and also so forth. When all these uh, uh, emotions arise, one must learn to make it, make the mind equanimous, uh, equipoise, even-mindedness, in order to proceed with the practice, then avoidance of unconcentrated person. Uh, some people don't like to meditate. They like to hear Dhamma, read Dhamma book, discuss Dhamma, and uh, they say, we are all right, we, are, we, are, we don't have to meditate. We are calm, we are peaceful, we, are, we have uh, uh, loving friendliness, uh, we don't hurt anybody. We don't, we don't commit any offenses, uh, therefore we are all right, we don't have to meditate. And they are the ones most dangerous for meditation because uh, uh, they disturb meditators. So we must try to avoid them as far as possible. Then a con a cultivate or concentrated person. That means people who love to practice meditation, who love to gain concentration, who enjoy concentration meditation, we must associate with them because they encourage us, we encourage them. So, you know, it's a similar uh, mentality, attitude, uh, practice, uh, help each other. And therefore, if a husband meditate, wife also should meditate so that both of them can make a schedule uh, to do work and to do meditation. If the pe people live with friends and they must have similar attitude, uh, they, they all uh, have uh, interest in the practice of meditation. Then, uh, resoluteness upon that, that concentration. That means we determine, decide uh, to keep up with our practice at regular uh, time. This is a very important thing to prepare, uh, remember. And uh, this Uh, let me see. 
So, our, let me see how, how much time we have. Okay, okay. I want to spend... Can I change that slide to the second one? Huh? No, no, no. I want to start, continue this. Okay. And then... Uh, This is called Arnapana Sati Samadhi. Arnapana Sati Samadhi. The concentration developed through the practice of uh, mind of mindfulness of breathing. It is like uh, uh, Focus in mind on uh, the the breathing, uh, just like uh, when you focus a mind, everything is very gradually unfold. Uh, there are many similes given in uh, in this tradition. Sometimes in books, sometimes meditation experienced meditation teachers, enlightened teachers. One simile of focus in mind. Our mind is like a, a wild calf, wild animal, uh, going here and there, uh, freely moving, uh, no aim, just like a little calf that has uh, drunk a lot of milk from, a, from his mother and um, running around, jumping up and down, and no control. So somebody wants to tame this wild animal. So what this person has to do is to take a rope, tie the animal, and bring it to a post firmly sunk into the ground, and then tie the animals to the post. Once the animal is posed, tied to the post, the animal will try to run, but he cannot run because of the rope. He can run as far as the, uh, to the length of the rope. And then he keeps running and running and running around the post. Finally, he settles down. Similarly, the post is the nostrils, nostrils. Sometimes when, uh, when we ask people to focus the mind on the nostrils, they say we cannot focus the mind on the nostrils. We don't feel the breath there. So, uh, they have to uh, deliberately find this place uh, even little uh, uh, force, uh, some effort, they have to find the place. That is nostrils, or they put the nose, or upper lip. That depends on the formation of nose. So each person has to find out the place where the breath touches. That is like a firm post. The breath inhaling and exhaling is like the rope, uh, no, like like the, uh, the, what do you call, the, like mindfulness. And the uh, animal is like the mind. Mind is like the animal. So with the mindfulness, we train the mind to stay in one place. That is the simile. Uh, there are various similes, many other similes. One is a uh, uh, lame man watching a swing. Suppose somebody puts a baby in a swing 
and there is a person who cannot move his head. He is disabled. He sits in a chair, and when the swing comes right in front of his nose, he notices it and tap. It goes to the left, and then when it comes back to the front, he tap it to the right. So it goes back and forth, but he cannot move to go move his head to see the the swing uh, all the way to the end. He can only see it when it comes to in front of him, and therefore. This is called Parimukhaṁ Satiṁ Upatapetta. Buddha said the mindful meditator must keep the mind in the present moment. Parimukha is the Pali word, uh, is in the present, in front. Here in front is not just uh, uh, the uh, spatial front, but front in the present moment, a temporal front. That means in the, when the breath comes to the, to touch and touches the nostrils, that moment, because this mindfulness practice is the practice that develop the awareness of touch, passa. When we become aware of the touch of breath, that does not last too long. That touch is not remaining permanently. It is not static. It keeps moving. As breath moves in and out, that breath moves in and out, touching the nostrils. That touch is not something permanent but it happens so quickly that we feel that it is permanent. But it is not really permanent. In order to understand that, the person must be very sharp in focusing mind on the touch of breath. Uh, since he is unable to lift his head. And there is another simile, like a gatekeeper. Gatekeeper is a person uh, who does not uh, take detailed account, uh, does not take into account the details of people getting in and coming out, entering and exiting. That person simply becomes aware of persons going in and coming out. At the gate, he is not concerned about the person who is already gone inside or the person who has left the gate. He simply becomes aware of the, uh, the persons entering the gate and exiting the gate. Similarly, when we uh, pay attention to the breath, this also is sometimes very tricky because when we discuss later, uh, we have some details uh, to mention. When we mention the details, one might wonder how can we keep the mind focused only on the uh, touch of breath at the tip of our nose or nostrils with all these details. We will discuss this later. And then another simile is the saw. When you cut uh, wood uh, on the flat ground, level ground, there is a big log. You take a saw. When you cut the saw, the log, uh, you are generally you are aware that the saw has many teeth, but your mind is focused on the place where the uh, where, where the, the teeth touches the log. That very point, only that point you focus your mind. You don't, focus, you don't 
uh, see all the teeth of the saw uh, going in and back and forth. But you are becoming aware of that the place where you cut the wood so that you can cut it correctly in right place without uh, going zigzag here and there. Similarly, when you focus the mind on the breath, you have to keep the mind focused only in one place. I said this is very tricky because the mind is very fickle. It is always unsteady and therefore it is very not very easy uh, to keep the mind focused on that. Then uh, now we go to the uh, slide, where is the slide? Okay. Now we want to, and also this uh, uh, Anapanasati, mindfulness of breathing, this course has been divided into four tetrads, each representing one of the foundations of, four foundations of mindfulness. First one represents mindfulness of the body. Second represents mindfulness of feeling. Third mindfulness of mind. Fourth mindfulness of mind object. Now let us take the first one. Those who are very much interested in Pali, this very easy to remember. I want you to see the screen. On the screen you can see in Pali first. So one sit in a comfortable posture, put the hands on the lap, close the eyes, keep the body straight, upright, not moving back and forth. The reason for keeping the body upright is to breathe is to breathe comfortably to f fill our lungs with uh, with breath to get a lot of oxygen so that we will not fall asleep and also we must remember the uh, awareness is always ready if the body is very steady. As I mentioned earlier, body becomes quiet, mind becomes quiet. Body becomes steady, mind becomes steady. These two always go together. Mentality, materiality, body and mind always go together. Now, let us see in Pali, Di Ganga Asa Santo, Di Ganga Asa Samiti Pajanati. Di Ganga Pasa Santo, Di Ganga Pasa Samiti Pajanati. Rasanga Asa Santo, Rasanga Asa Samiti Pajanati. Rasanga Pasa Santo, Rasanga Pasa Samiti Pajanati. Sabbakaya Patisang Vedi, Asa Sisrami de Sikrati, Sabbakaya Patisang Vedi, Pasa Sisrami de Sikrati, Pasambayan Kaya Sankarang, Asa Sisrami de Sikrati, Pasambayan Kaya Sankarang, Pasa Sisrami de Sikrati. I read it only once. Uh, I think it will be better if we repeat it many times to remember. Only by repeating many times we can remember. Since the words are very few and also repetitive, easy to remember. Now let us go to see the see English. This you may remember very easily. Breathing in long, he understand, I breathe in long. Or breathing out long, he understands, I breathe out long. 
breathing in short, he understands I breathe in short, or breathing in out, breathing out short, he understands I breathe out short. He trains this thus, I shall breathe in experience in the whole body of breath. He trains thus, I shall breathe out experience in the whole body of breath. He trains thus, I shall breathe in training, in, in tranquilizing the body formation. He trains thus, I, sh I shall uh, breathe out tranquilizing the bodily formations. Now, there are four pairs here. And these four pairs of four is called tetrads. Tetrad. In this fifth, in this first tetrad, there are uh, eight individual uh, exercises and four pairs. Now, breathing in long, he breathes in. He understands. He breathe, I breathe in long. Now, in this sentence, uh, you you can see last one with. Uh, uh, quotation mark, single quotation mark, I breathe in long. Here, we don't verbalize to say, I breathe in long. In order to make it uh, as, a, as a method of teaching, the word I breathe in long is used. What we should do while breathing in long, he understands this is a long breath. Long breath is going in. That means the breath is long. When I inhale, my breath is long. Even there we don't say, my breath. Mentally we become aware, we just become aware. We don't use the word we use the word to express. We are not going to tell somebody. We are just experiencing what we should do. We breathe in long, experiencing long inhaling. We breathe out long, understanding Breath, uh, understanding that the uh, breath is long going out, breath, the experiencing the long exhaling. So understanding long inhaling, understanding long exhaling, one breathes in long one breathes low in out low. That that happens naturally. We don't use the word. I mentioned that we should not use the word because eventually we want to stop verbalizing. Verbalizing is stimulating the mind. When we verbalize, we stimulate the mind and we keep building more and more concepts, ideas words, and so forth and so on. And therefore, we try not to verbalize. Simply become aware of inhaling long, exhaling long, or inhaling, experiencing long inhaling as long inhaling, experiencing as long exhaling as long exhaling. This point must be kept very clear in your mind. Then, after a while, our breath becomes short. That means we are not talking about short of breath, but the length of inhaling, length of exhaling, naturally come to the normal rhythm. Normal rhythm. And occasionally, when the lungs are tired, we take a long inhaling, 
low on exhaling, that also happens very naturally. So we, uh, our training is to calming, is to calm the body. So we begin that from the very beginning. So breathing in short, we understand I breathe in short. Just like before, when short inhaling is happening, the meditator must experience short, short inhale. And while experiencing short inhaling, one breathe in. While experiencing short exhaling, one breathe out. And then, after these four steps, the two pairs, the third step is he trains thus. I shall breathe in experience the whole body of breath. Now, body of breath is called uh, one of the inhaling and exhaling is among bodies, one of the bodies. Among bodies, inhaling and exhaling is another body, Buddha said. Khayanyataro, one of the bodies. And also it is called, inhaling and exhaling is called uh, Sankara, Khaya Sankara. Uh, when we talk about Sankara, conditioners, Inhaling, exhaling is called Kaya Sankara. Why it is called Kaya Sankara? Sankara means conditioner. Conditioner. Because inhaling and exhaling conditions this body by bringing oxygen into our lungs. When the red blood cells come to heart, they come to the lungs and then when we breathe in we bring a lot of oxygen and recharge this oxygen depleted red blood cells. The, we have more people say that there are 56 trillion cells. Each cell is, is charged with oxygen. Without oxygen, they don't last. And then the oxygen-rich blood goes to heart, then heart pumps, it goes all over the body, and then, then collect uh, oxygen-depleted blood cells, bring back to heart, then heart sends to the lungs, and when we breathe, we feel uh, char recharge the oxygen, the which are these red blood cells with oxygen, and then goes to all over the body. And therefore, Buddha called the body, inhaling and exhaling is body conditioner. We have skin conditioners, hair conditioners, nail conditioners, but body conditioner is much, much more important, the most important conditioner. And therefore, Inhaling, exhaling is a body, whole body. Uh, what is the whole body? I think in my next talk I will discuss uh, the, what the whole body means. Now let us proceed with this because in today's this talk I cannot say all. Then he says that I, sh I shall breathe out, uh, experience the whole breath body. And then he trains thus, I shall breathe in tranquilizing the bodily formations. Bodily formations. And he trains thus, I shall breathe out, tranquilizing the bodily formation. Tranquilizing, we don't, we don't deliberately tranquilize. Uh, like artificial tranquilizer, bringing artificial tranquilizer. That means this process itself, 
step by step. If we go exactly like this, then the in the last pair, we experiencing the body is tranquil, calm, relaxed, and peaceful. Until such time, we go, we do this practice. And this is the first tetrad. We have a lot of things to say, talk about this first tetrad. Tetrad means four pairs. Each has two, then there are such four pairs. Now, friends, I think today's talk is a little, uh, since it is introductory talk, I gave a little, I spent a little longer time, and now we want to meditate using this uh, mindfulness of breathing, this explanation, these pairs, we meditate. Now, when you meditate, you remember this. That is why I put this on the screen for you to see. Breathing in long, you understand breathing in long. Breathing uh, out long, you experience that. Breathing short and so forth, then experiencing whole body and so forth. And all these things I will explain in more detail later on in next talk. Let us meditate. I keep this on the screen and meditate and begin with our meditation with this. Okay. <coughs> You can see that. Okay, sit in a comfortable posture and recite this uh, metta recital together. I hope you can see that. Ah, yeah. You can see that? Metta? Okay. You can go full screen, Bonte. Eh? You can go full screen. So we can see the full screen in your document. With the document? But we can see. It's fine. Okay. May all beings be happy and secure. May all beings have happy minds. Whatever living beings there may be, Without exception, weak or strong, long, large, medium, short, subtle or gross, visible or invisible, living near or far, born or coming to birth, may all beings have happy minds. Let no one deceive another, nor despise anyone anywhere, neither from anger nor ill will, should anyone wish harm to another. As a mother would risk her own life to protect her only child, even so towards all living beings, one should cultivate a boundless heart. One should cultivate for all the world a heart of boundless loving friendliness, above, below, and all around, unobstructed, without hatred or resentment, whether standing, walking, or sitting, lying down, or whenever awake, one should develop this mindfulness. This is called divinely dwelling here, not falling into erroneous views, but virtuous and endowed with vision. Removing desire for sensual pleasures, one comes never again to birth in the womb. Now let us go to the practice.
by means of these meritorious deeds, may I never join with the foolish, may I join always with the wise, until the time I attain Ibbana. May the suffering be free from suffering, may the fear struck be free from fear, may the grieving be free from grief, so too may all beings be. From the highest realm of existence to the lowest, may all beings arisen in these realms, with form and without form, with perception and without perception, be released from all suffering and attain to perfect peace. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Dear friends, once again I want to, in addition to this wish, I want to share a metta with all living beings, particularly those who are suffering in hospitals and recovering from various diseases taken care of by nurses, doctors and hospital staffs. May they return to normal health very quickly and live in good health, practice the matter and liberation. And those doctors, nurses, who have been taking care of these people, dedicating their lives, sacrificing their comfort, risking their life, may they continue their marvelous service and live in very good health and continue their Dhamma practice and attain liberation. Those who have lost their loved ones, who have been grieving for their death, then uh, let them be free from that and return to regular life, continue their Dharma practice and attain liberation. All those who are supporting various wonderful, marvelous projects, be also well, happy and peaceful continue their practice and attain liberation. Those who are victims of various atrocities, discriminations, war crimes and so forth, may they have peace, comfort and liberate themselves from greed, hatred and delusion and suffering and attain liberation from samsaric suffering. May all beings be well, happy and peaceful and attain liberation. Thank you. Tomorrow I will ask uh, questions at this time. Uh, beginning uh, tomorrow also ask, answering questions first and then I do meditation. So this time we change the order uh, of our schedule. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, Bante. 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 Bante. Thank you, Bante. Thank you very much.